Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to my Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode playthrough. I promised you guys a character quick fix for Karlak when we picked her up, and we just did. So, if you have been watching up to this point, we just fought the Owl Bear and then moved up along the river, talked to Scratch, jumped across the river, and grabbed Karlak. We're immediately going to do her fight with the Paladins, which I think is the hardest fight in the game. Um, which I'll talk about when we get there, but first, let's just quickly update her build. So we've gone back to camp, respect her with withers, and we are just going to quickly fix her character stats to make sure that they are slightly more optimal, and so that we don't die in this fight, because it's extremely difficult. We're going to drop her strength down to 16, pick up 14 points in dexterity, and drop charisma down to 8 to get 16 in constitution. This gives us the maximum hit points and armor class. Depending on what gear we have at this point in the game, we may or may not be able to actually equip her with good medium armor that will increase her armor class. So Barbarian's unarmored defense feature lets them add their con and dex to armor. This will give her 15 AC when unarmored, which may or may not be as good or better than the AC she would have just with medium armor. Um, for her skill selection, I'm pretty happy with these. We want perception and survival on her because she has okay wisdom, and of course athletics is the only one that really matters, so let's do that. And then we are going to just level her up really quick. At level 2, Barbarian, there is no choice you need to make, but you do get access to Reckless Attack. Very important ability, and understanding how that works is going to be critical for playing this game. Um, and then, at level 3, we get to choose what subclass she's going to be in. And in this case, for this playthrough anyways, and specifically for this fight, I may decide to change this later, but we're going to make her a Berserker Barbarian. There's two reasons for this. One is that Berserker just gets more attacks, which at level 3, it's very difficult to get access to more than one main hand attack, and Berserker gets that with Frenzied Strike. The throw is also going to be very useful for this upcoming fight, so we might as well spec her into that. And the bonus action throw... Um, does allow you to act as a pseudo-healer, because you can throw a healing potion with it. And since Shadowheart ran out of all her spells in our last fight, we won't otherwise have access to bonus action healing, because we have no healing word on the rest of the party. And so we're not going to bring Shadowheart for this fight. So we're going to grab this just in case we need to bonus action throw a potion at an ally in order to get them up from the ground. Alright, so that's all the decisions we have to make for Karlak. We have gotten her stats evened out, and we are ready to go. You'll notice I spent Shadowheart's last level 2 spell slot on aid. Just might as well get a little bit of value out of that, since we're probably going to long rest after this fight, assuming we survive it. Let's leave camp and the party that we are bringing. You can see all their builds in the video I did on their builds, um, but also... Uh, I will just quickly mention what we've got. We have a level 3 Pact of the Tome Warlock, level 3 Battlemaster Fighter, and level 3 Rogue. Uh, an Assassin Rogue. We are here just at where you find Karlak, and so we're going to go up and take her fight her unique fight with the paladins right up in this house. We're going to approach from this side so that we end up on this balcony. Um, I'm not going to cheese the fight. There's a couple things you can do, and I'll just quickly mention some ways that you can cheat a little bit in this fight uh, if you are really worried about it. Um, and that is, for example, you can block this doorway with these crates and barrels, preventing the paladin from getting to you, and then just kill him with ranged attacks. Uh, you could also bring explosive barrels from another area, and that's always an option if there's a really hard fight. You can set those up. Um, but I'm going to try to approach these honor mode fights honorably, I guess, without the... Even though, you know, I know there's a fight coming up, and there's only so much I can do to... Uh, to pretend I don't, but our characters don't know there's a fight coming up here necessarily, or maybe they think they can talk their way out of it. Unless we are playing just pure hit first and act questions later characters, I'm going to be approaching fights as though um, we're people in the world and might want to engage diplomatically. So let's come up here. I should also make sure we've actually geared Karlak. So let's hand her a couple potions first up. I'm going to split these healing potions and make sure that Karlak has a few more potions because it's very useful for her to have those. I also should check we do have this medium armor that you find in the Owlbear Cave and see if that increases her AC. 
still 15, but it does give you boosts against undead. Um, so there, yeah, there's no no particular point in giving her this medium armor right now. So we don't need that. I'm not going to swap their weapons. Lazel can keep the Burning Sword and Karlak can keep her Unmagical Great Axe. So we're really going into this with almost no useful items. Although I will have Astarian poison his weapons probably. No, again, I think we're going to avoid that. We're just going to go talk to them. So they are in this area. Um, let's also just precast an Armor of Agathis, which is a uh, last until long rest anyways. And we're probably not going to use Darkness in this. We, we probably won't need both Darkness and Hex in this upcoming encounter, so we can spend one of our Warlock spell slots on Armor of Agathis, getting five more hit points. It doesn't stack with, or it does stack with the aid hit points, because aid increases your hit point maximum rather than giving you temporary hit points. So now our Warlock is actually quite tanky here. Astarian is also just going to start this encounter hidden because we might we might as well. And I don't think it's unreasonable for us to say, oh, we're going into a fight. Let's have a rogue hide ahead of time. Or a dangerous situation. Let's have our rogue hide ahead of time. We'll go up here to, to try to get the high ground. And then enter this area where we can talk to everyone. So let me quickly separate everyone. We'll have Astarian move over to here. We know that there's the mage through this door on the in the other room also, but it's fine to be doing this. And then I'm going to have my main character, even though this is not the way to do it, um, but just for, for role-playing purposes, I'm going to have my main character descend the ladder and talk to Anders. This will put her in melee contact starting the fight, so... If no you more. just want to, uh... Leave us in peace, and we shall leave you in kind. Cut the crap, and If you just want to win the fight, you then you wouldn't us. do this, of course, Please. with your ranged character. Just but I want to, you know, approach this fight as though there are... As though we are approaching it for the first time. So while we're being cautious, we're not going to use too much metagame knowledge. Alright, uh, let's just go ahead and... Zari. Start the fight. Please. Mercy. We thought you would but Tyr will not consign us to our death. He is merciful. Leave us enough. Enough. The furnace was never my home. It... So they all get real, real mad. We lost initiative and are now going to take a big pile of damage, unfortunately. So actually we got pretty lucky there. That was a pretty low uh damage die from the Yeah, they rolled a one and a and a two. On the, on the damage there. So extremely lucky roll against Trin's Hunter's Mark. Let me also check. I did not check if this guy gets a legendary action. It looks like he doesn't on honor mode. So even though this is an extremely difficult encounter, he at least does not have a legendary action. Let's have Astarian enter the fight from the high ground here. So we are going to have him make a ranged attack. And we're going to try to bring down the uh, rogue first. Or the ranger first. Um, when the wizard enters the battle, we will probably try to bring her down as well. But the idea here is we're going to have Lazel tie up Anders and tank against him, while Karlak fights the ranger, assuming that she can reach. It's going to be a little weird because we have to jump and then rage. And it's probable I should have moved Karlak to the low ground, actually, before this fight, because she needs a bonus action. Anyways, let's go ahead and take this shot. 88% chance to hit. Uh, do I actually want to use Piercing Shot or Poison ahead of time? We could Poison here. I could also have used dropped a pool of Poison and poisoned Karlak's weapon as well, but decided that would, that would just waste too much of everyone's valuable time. Um, we're not going to use our bonus action. No, we'll probably just bonus action hide. So I'm just going to attack here. Just a basic attack, I think. Uh, no, I'm reconsidering that. Let's go ahead and use our piercing shot. This will be, it would be useful against Anders as well. Hmm, I could do this for even more damage against him. Because we want to kill him. So the reason this fight is so difficult is that he's a paladin. He's level 5, which means he gets 2 attacks 
uh, right off the bat, which is more than our characters have at our, our level three. And he, because he's a paladin, he has enormous burst damage from his smite attacks. He also is, his AI, I think, is very likely to attack downed characters um, and try to actually kill them, which often the AI will avoid doing. So that's another thing that he is dangerous because of. Uh, and enemy paladins are bugged, unless they've fixed this for honor mode, but they are bugged and don't interact with reactions like shield, uh, cutting words, and um, warding flare. They, they simply ignore those effects, enemy paladins, so their smites just go through those anyways, even if your shield should be able to increase your AC enough. That is a bug that I am hoping they have fixed, but is one that has made this fight much more difficult than it should be, typically. I think we're actually going to try to burst him down. I'm, I'm kind of changing my mind a little bit as to how we're going to take this fight, but let's have Asarian go over here and take a shot. We got the Gaping Wounds, and yeah, we are going to apply Sneak Attack. Uh, perfectly average Sneak Attack damage. And then Astarian also gets to go again because he's an Assassin Rogue, so it, he refreshes his action in the first round of combat, his action and bonus action. So now we can have him do another attack. Let's go ahead and fire again with advantage. He uh, isn't hiding, still has advantage because of Assassinate. So enemies who haven't acted in the round yet, he has advantage against. Um, which allows him to apply, sne uh, apply sneak attack again. So we're just going to fire again. Do I want to use one of our special arrows? The arrow of Ill Mater actually preventing him from using healing could be extremely powerful. So let's go ahead and just use this right now. I also should have used poison because I forgot we would refresh our bonus action. I could have used the poison if I wanted to use it refreshed and then still hidden with our first our bonus action here. So let's go ahead and fire an arrow of Illmater at him. So that has no effect, as, or no save. As long as it hits, he cannot regain hit points. So that's going to be really, really good for us. And then I'm going to back Astarian up just a little bit to get out of lines of sight. And he's going to go ahead and cunning action hide. And then we'll move him just a little bit more, just so that he's not exactly where they last saw him. All right, let's have Lazelle jump down to come on I thought you could jump onto the desk and not take damage but I guess they aren't going to let you do that can she just make it not so much um... so this is a, a slight problem because if she just falls prone in front of him that will be a little embarrassing I want Karlak also to go next to the hunter, so we're going to have her jump rather than rage, probably. Looks like our characters may fall prone. I thought they could make these jumps safely, but I guess with only 16 strength, it's just too high for them. So that was a miscalculation by me. Let's go ahead and have Karlak jump first. No, I'm going to have Lazel jump first, because it's more important that we have somebody standing next to Anders. And this is the using this jump is the only way we can actually get into melee contact, because we we just don't have enough movement to just move. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if we fall prone and lose Lazel's turn, then that will suck. But hopefully we don't. All right, we didn't. So that part's fine. So now I can get her over here next to Anders. And then we're going to go ahead and use a precision attack. Try to bring him down in one round, maybe. Precision attack, and then a trip attack against him. Which we hit. He saved against the trip attack, but he's now at 8 hit points. So I think we're going to go ahead and just action surge. Preventing him from getting a turn is going to be really good here, so we're just going to go ahead and hit him. Um, do I want to use another precision attack? We might actually be able to save a superiority die here, because he's he's uh, getting hit. I'm going to go ahead and, and just use the precision attack, though, and then we'll just make a normal greatsword attack. This is very likely to kill him if it hits, which it did. 
and then we're going to move Lazelle this direction so she can kind of intercept when the mage comes through the doorway. Then I'm going to have Karlak jump just to get information about whether she's going to be in melee contact with this guy. Which he is, that's great. So even though that took our, our bonus action, we now can't rage, we can at least attack, and I'm going to go ahead and use a... Um, a lacerate or a prepare. So I could do prepare for three additional slashing damage with our next attack or lacerate to apply bleed. I think I'm going to just go with the lacerate first. 55%. Well, we can decide we can use reckless attack if we miss. There's no reason for us right now to activate reckless attack in advance because you can always activate it if you miss. Sometimes there are circumstances where you want to use reckless attack if you miss your attack um or you want to use reckless attack in advance if you want to trigger the advantage on a second attack in that round or if you are fishing for critical hits we don't need a critical hit in particular so we're just going to go ahead and do this and we hit don't need a reckless attack so there's no advantage against karlak karlak's turn is over so let's go ahead and just cast a hunter's mark to make sure that we're doing uh, more damage. I guess I should have done this first for the, the constitution save. And then we can just Eldritch Blast here. 55% because this enemy has pretty pretty good AC, right? Yeah, she, uh, 15 AC. Not incredible, but, but not bad. And we're going to go ahead and fire this off here. We missed, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and have my character jump back up onto the high ground. I actually should have done that before attacking. We'd have had a 65% chance to hit with the plus two from high ground. Um, so that was definitely an error. And then we are going to end everyone's turn. Mage cast mirror image and <laughs> is coming the long way around. Interesting. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to her. Oops. All right, I forgot to set Karlak's um, opportunity attacks to... I forgot to set Karlak's opportunity attacks to... Uh... Why did we lose that many hit points? Um, I'll look that up in a second. We forgot to set opportunity attacks on Karlak to ask so she just attacked automatically but that's okay that's the only thing she's using her reactions for right now anyways all right let's look at how many hit points we lost here so we took 13 damage which should have been absorbed by our armor of agathis did i mess something up and somehow cancel my armor of agathis Also, why dice rolled again three times? And then we took another four damage. So that was... And we lost concentration on Hex. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this... With this combat log. We took 1d6 there from Hunter's Mark. And... This was 2d6... 2d6 piercing from ensnaring strike plus 4 for dexterity is 13. That's 17 damage, so 34. Um, oh, and then we'd taken a one shot earlier. Okay, yeah, that adds up. Sorry, I was just trying to figure out where all that damage came from. All right, so now the enemy mage is on high ground. I don't believe we can have Lazelle reach her in one round, although that would be sort of ideal if we could. So she can jump to here. I'm going to have her dash into melee contact, even if she can't make it in one round without doing that. So we're going to start with her jumping, because if I get her into melee contact, we can sneak attack the... Enemy, it also sort of stops the mage from doing as much stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so she's 31 feet away. So with a dash action, we can just get her into contact here. It required action and bonus action, but getting into melee with the 
the wizard, of course, is very valuable. So that's her turn. That's all she needs to do. Then Karlak is going to move into melee contact here. And also enter a rage. Now the question is, who do I want to use my sneak attack against? So we have a sneak attack against either enemy, obviously because we're hidden and both of them are in melee contact. We, This enemy has the mirror image up, um, and this enemy has no mirror image, but also is much more likely to just die to an attack from Karlak. So let's just go ahead and, atta and hit with Karlak and our main character and see if we can just kill this enemy, and then maybe the sneak attack can go against the other one. Because Karlak is sort of forced to hit Trin here, because she's in melee with her, and there's no way she can reach the mage in, t in time. Alright, so there we go. So we got that attack, and then Karlak can start coming back around. Is it faster to go this way, or th to jump? It's going to be faster to go this back this way, and then use a, a jump to get to the high ground, because she has 16 strength. Then we're going to have our main character come out here and throw an Eldritch Blast if we can. Have to find a, an angle here. And one of the downsides of Eldritch Blast so, is that it doesn't really work with the attack preview. So we're going to jump. This gets us a little bit of extra movement because that was slightly more than 10 feet, even with only 8 strength. And then we could come out here and try to eat one of the mirror images. Might actually, I wonder if it's better to use Vicious Mockery here. Nah, she's not going to attack. We just want to eat the mirror images to make it more likely to land a Starian sneak attack. Fall by my hand. That's fine, we expected to miss that, it was only a 35% chance. Now, a Starian, can you still attack or is the doorway blocked? Okay, you can just attack from there, that's totally fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Do I want to use any... Other actions? I don't think so. No consumables or anything that we need to use. And let's go ahead and attack. Path is interrupted. Okay, so we need to have him move. The What I'm trying to figure out is, can I get an angle without having to jump through the doorway? Because we can always have him jump here, but that does use his bonus action. So... Let's try to move without eating too much of his remaining movement, if we can. Just try to inch forwards here. See if we've got the attack. Okay, we don't. So we have to have him jump. This is fine. He's going to be... He's still going to get the sneak attack, even though he's not hidden. Oh, he is still hidden. All right. Hiding failed, um, but he's still hidden. Not 100% sure how that worked. I guess he re-hid when he exited her line of sight. Line of sight is so buggy in this game. Alright, and we hit. Doesn't eat a mirror image, but does, of course, do damage, so that part's great. And we just pass the turn with all our remaining characters. She cast hold person, even though he was hidden. <laughs> so, you know, things are happening and we're not entirely sure why. Um, and then she tries to shove Lazel, but can't. Let me fire one of these, see if we can eat another mirror image. Our Eldritch Blast does less damage than a Great Sword attack, so we'd rather have it miss than the, um, the Great Sword attack miss. I'm gonna also move just out of the doorway here. Alright, so we hit, broke concentration on hold person, which allows Astarian to act. Um, he can cunning action hide to gain advantage on his attack. Let's just attack with Lazelle and see if she just hits. We'll just go ahead and use precision attack and just try to end the fight without doing anything more fancy. Alright, we missed, lost a mirror image. Astarian's gonna cunning action hide, and then he's going to fire with advantage. Use sneak attack, and that will end the fight. Alright, now Karlak's going to get mad and trash the whole place, but we were able to beat that fight. So I want to talk, because that looked a little easy, about why that fight is so hard. Um, and obviously the enemies are over-leveled compared to what we are at. Um, but you can, you can, with just clever target prioritization, make sure that you 
kill it. If you can bring Anders down before he gets to attack, then he doesn't get to just kill someone. But if he had gotten a turn, he would almost 100% have killed one of our characters. Um, in this case, it would have been Lazel, and we'd have been able to finish him off with Karlak, who is already on the low ground, and who has Reckless Attack to more or less guarantee advantage. Um, having a Saurian shooting arrows down from the high ground, guaranteeing him extra hit chance, also helps a lot with this fight as well. So, you know, we didn't... I wouldn't say we approached this fight, like, totally gormlessly, like you might on your first playthrough, just running up through the front door. Um, we took precautions, but we also didn't cheese the fight in any particular way, like blocking doorways with barrels or whatever, and you can still get a very clean fight in what, in my opinion, is one of the hardest fights in the game, and often the most random. All right, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this look at another Honor Mode boss fight. Uh, that boss didn't have legendary actions, but still just a super hard fight, so I wanted to show it to you. And, of course, we've now updated Carlax build. Um, I will be back with the next major fight and probably a quick update for level 4. If you're enjoying this playthrough, then do let me know. Um, I really appreciate it when everyone takes the time to comment, and it helps a ton with the algorithm. And also, of course, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers, my friends. I'll catch you next time.